Okay, so good morning everyone. Welcome to this hour-long forest yoga practice. We're going to begin our practice today lying down on our back. So unless you're already there, make your way down. You may want to have your legs extended, but if it feels a little bit more comfortable for your low back, then feel free to have the soles of your feet perhaps mat width apart with the knees knocking in together. And give yourself a moment. Allow your eyes to gently close. Start to tune into your body, the here and now. Tune into the physical sensations that you're experiencing this morning. And as you observe those sensations as much as possible, try to avoid labeling them as positive or negative. Just become aware. Notice your energy levels. your mood and any emotions that you're experiencing right now. Again, having a sense that you are the observer of those emotions. As though you're looking at them from an outsider's perspective. And begin to switch on your deep breath, your yogic breath. If it's in your practice, maybe you're bringing a little restriction into the back of the throat as you breathe. Creating that oceanic sound. Just feeling into your deep breath, noticing where it travels to with ease, noticing where you feel a little bit congested or the breath feels as though it's unable to travel. Our practice this morning and my theme for this week is all about control, about exploring what control means on our yoga mat. And I'm sure that we can think of instances where in our yoga practice, we do feel in control. It could be now, it could be connecting with your breath as we do some pranayama, some breathing practice. Maybe a favorite posture pops into mind, one that you know well and that you feel comfortable in. There are also instances on our yoga mat where we feel out of control. Perhaps we're wobbling around in a balance, falling out of an inversion, or maybe we're working with an injury or some tightness or tension in our body, feeling as though we can't go as deep as we did before. And whether or not we feel in control, the one thing we can control is our reactions. Will falling out of that balance make you roll up your yoga mat, stick it in the cupboard and never look at it again? Or will it inspire you to discover what more you can do? Another pose that you can add to your repertoire of postures that you feel in control in. So by exploring this concept of control on our yoga mat, perhaps we can start to influence our ability to control our emotions, our behaviors and our perspectives in everyday life.
So take a moment to breathe here. You could use this as your intention for your practice today, or if there's something else that's resonating with you right now, take a moment now just to draw that intention down into your heart space. And when you're ready, gently start to bring a little bit of movement back into your hands, your feet. Take a nice full body stretch, reach the hands over top of head, lengthen the legs away, uh, all the way along the floor. And on your exhale, gently draw both knees into your chest. Give them a little loving squeeze towards you, maybe a gentle rock from left to right. And finding your way into stillness, let's interlace our hands over the left chin and stretch your right leg out along the mat. Inhale, flex into both of your feet. Exhale as you reach your right heel forwards to the space in front of you. Gently draw your left knee slightly closer toward your left armpit. And soften and relax into your shoulders and your jaw. Keep thinking of drawing up through the right thigh, lifting through the kneecap, and having a sense of trying to press the back of your right leg down to the floor. As your left knee gently travels a little closer in towards you. Well done, let's begin to straighten the left leg, sole of foot to sky, interlacing the hands behind the back of the thigh here. If hamstrings are very tight this morning, you can have a little bend in the left knee, otherwise reach up through the heel, maybe even reaching up through the ball of the foot, nice deep breaths. Let's start to take a few circles with the left ankle. Sending them one way, and then reversing back in the opposite direction. Good, find stillness through the left foot, reach up through the heel, and on an exhale, gently, gently see if you can take your left big toe slightly closer towards you. Have a sense that you're almost kicking your legs in opposite directions. Extending your exhalations if this is a very tight space in the body. And trying to soften the periphery of the body, the shoulders, the neck, the face, rather than building up any resistance or tension in those spaces. Well done, gently start to bend your right knee, bringing the sole of your right foot to the floor, and then cross the left ankle over the right thigh to create this single pigeon shape through the legs, almost like a figure four shape. And if the hips are super tight this morning, you can stay here, but if you wish to come deeper, bring the legs towards you, interlacing the hands behind the back of the right thigh, maybe even over the top of the right shin if you can. A few nice deep breaths here. If you want more of a hip stretch, send your left knee forwards into space. So the left knee moves away from you. Close the eyes and explore that space with your breath. Deep breaths in. Long breaths out. Remembering that you have the control in this posture. If it's too much, you can ease yourself out. If you want more, the left knee draws further forwards. And 
Well done. Gently bring the sole of your right foot flat to the floor. Keep this figure four shape through the legs. The arms come out alongside the body with the palms facing up toward the ceiling. Let's move into a bridge pose variation from here. Inhale down deeply into belly. Exhale, press through the sole of the right foot and lift up through the hips. Again, left knee opens wide here. Press down firmly through the sole of your right foot to find a bit more steadiness, a bit more stability. And if you're having a little bit of a wobble this morning, again, just stay with your deep breath. See if you can make that sense of challenge into something that is enjoyable rather than something that puts you off. Well done, gently start to release your back down to the floor with control. Draw both knees into the chest, give them a little squeeze, and let's take all that to the second side now. So interlacing hands over right shin, left leg extending out along the floor. Deep breaths in, a sense of kicking your left heel forwards into space as you draw gently the right knee closer toward the right armpit. Unclench your jaw here. As the back of your left leg travels further down to the floor, see if you can lengthen the exhale even further. Notice your ability to control your breath. And when we deepen the exhale, that's when we get into the parasympathetic nervous system. That's when we start to switch on our ability to soften and to open up even more. These little tools that we have in our yoga practice to take us deeper without actually much more effort. Good, let's stretch the right foot to sky, interlacing the hands behind the right thigh. And again, just taking a few little circles for the ankle here, nice and slowly. Once you've gone round a few times in one direction, send it back the opposite way. Just feel the ankle loosening up if you've been jogging or cycling over the bank holiday weekend and this will hopefully feel like a really nice release for the ankles. And then finding some stillness through the right foot, reach through the heel, big breath in, long exhale out. Imagine again that you're kicking your feet in opposite directions here. Perhaps you can draw the right big toes slightly closer towards you. keeping the rest of the body soft and open. Well done, gently start to bend your left knee to bring the sole of your left foot to the floor. Right ankle crosses over the left thigh, creating that figure four shape with your legs, your single pigeon shape, either staying as you are or maybe drawing the left knee towards you, interlacing the hands behind your left thigh or over your left chin. Back of the neck is long. On your deep exhales, if you want to take this deeper, right knee moves forwards and away from you. Direct those deep ujjayi breaths into the outer right hip. Let go of any resistance that's building up in the body. Try to sink into the stretch. Good. 
Well done. Gently release the grip that you have around the left leg. Bring the sole of your left foot down to the floor. So again, we're staying with this figure four shape through the legs. The arms are coming wide. Sole, um, palms of the hands face up toward the ceiling. Deep breath in. Exhaling into our bridge variation. Lifting up through the hips. Feeling the backs of the shoulders spread wide on the mat. Creating that surface area through the upper back and then pressing firmly through the left heel to keep the hips elevated. Relax the shoulders, relax the belly, but keep the work in the left leg. Maybe the right knee moves forward so that you are opening out into the outer hip. Deep inhale. Exhale, draw belly button to spine slowly with control. Release yourself down. Take the sole of your right foot onto the floor. Have the feet a good hip distance apart here. We'll move into forest abs this morning and we're going to keep the feet planted to the floor for this variation. So I'd like you to interlace your hands, pop them around the back of the head, both elbows point directly up toward the ceiling. Now take a nice deep inhale into your belly. Feel the low back balloon down into the floor. Keep it there. And then as you exhale, draw both your elbows up toward your left knee and squeeze your low belly down as much as you can. Good. Inhale, come back to center, but keep the back of the head lifted away from the floor. Hold the breath there. Press low back to mat. Exhale, both elbows toward right knee. Now squeeze your low belly down strongly. Inhale, come back to center. Keep the back of the head lifted. Hold the inhale there. Press the low back into the floor. Exhale, both elbows to left knee. Squeeze low belly down. See if you can reach up a little higher through the elbows. Inhale, back to center. Hold the breath. Press low back to floor. Exhale, both elbows to right knee. Squeeze low belly down. Lift up a little higher through the elbows. Good. Inhale, back to center. Hold the breath, press low back to floor, exhale both elbows to left knee, draw low belly down. Now see if you can lift the bottom tip of left shoulder blade away from the mat. Inhale back to center. Hold the breath, press low back to floor, exhale both elbows to right knee. Squeeze low belly down, lift bottom tip of right shoulder blade higher away from the floor. Inhale back to center. Hold the breath, press low back to floor, exhale both elbows to left knee, squeeze low belly down, lift bottom tips of both shoulder blades higher away from the floor this time. Good, inhale back to center. Hold the breath, press low back to the mat, exhale both elbows to right knee, squeeze low belly down, lift the bottom tips of both shoulder blades a little higher away from the floor. Good, one more to each side, inhale back to center. Hold the breath, press low back to mat, exhale both elbows to left knee, squeeze low belly down, lift up a little bit higher through the elbows. Good, inhale back to center. Hold the breath, press low back to mat, exhale both elbows to right knee, squeeze low belly down, lift up as high as you can through the elbows and gently release, well done. Big sigh out through the mouth if you need it, maybe there's a full body stretch to be had here, or maybe you just want to hug the knees into the chest. Do what feels best for you. Well done. Okay, so from here, it's not very forest, but we're going to do this for a bit of fun this morning. I'd like you to draw the knees in toward the chest. So you're either holding on to the backs of the thighs, or if you can, you're taking your first two fingers and your thumbs and wrapping them around your big toes. Now we're going to take a little rock and roll up and down our back a few times onto our seat. So just working up a little bit of momentum. Obviously, if the back is a bit sensitive today, maybe you're just rolling to one side and coming up. And then eventually you're going to come up onto your seat. Keep hold of the thighs or take hold of the big toes. Coming into a Navasana variation, pressing your heels forward. So there's a sense that the chest is energetically drawing forward. You're holding on to your thighs or your big toes. You're lengthening up through the spine. Legs don't have to be straight here. Good, another deep breath in. Now we're gonna roll back onto our backs and come all the way up into a standing position in one motion. Looks a little something like this. Have a little go. <laughs> well done. 
hopefully feeling a little bit more energized now. So stepping to the top of your mat, finding your way into mountain pose, spread the hands wide, palms facing forwards. Again, if the low back is a little tweaky today, feet hip distance, otherwise step the feet together. Just take a really nice deep inhale into center of heart space. And on your exhale, bring your hands to prayer position at your heart center. Inhale, stretch the arms above the head, moving your gaze up toward your thumbs, reaching through fingertips. And then on your exhale, soften into your knees and take your forward fold all the way over your legs, reaching fingertips to floor. Good. Inhale, step just your right foot back. Nice long stance, gently lowering the right knee down to the floor. Moving into a dragon lunge today. So if knees are sensitive, keep the left knee stacking over top of ankle. Otherwise, I want you to sink a little bit lower in the hips. Think pubic bone moving down toward the front heel. Now your fingertips could be on the floor or you might want to interlace them, pop them on the front thigh or even reach them up above the head. Just do what feels best for you. Nice deep breaths here. So again, your opportunity to exercise your right to control which variation you take today. And make sure that that decision is based not on what your ego is telling you, it's based on what feels best in your body, what feels comfortable and steady. One more deep breath in. Exhale, hands to floor, step back into your high plank, pause there for a moment. Soften into the elbow slightly, wrapping through the shoulders as you squeeze elbows into centre line. Now draw in the tummy, just lower the knees down to the floor, hover there for a moment. So we're going to come through a chaturanga variation. Take a big breath in. On your exhale, lower your heart space down in line with the, your elbows and pause. You're coming halfway. Draw shoulders away from the ears. Another big breath in. Exhale, press through the palms, come back up onto hands and knees. Twice more like that. Inhale deeply. Exhale, squeeze the elbows tight to side ribs as you come halfway down and pause. Belly button draws to spine. Inhale, press the mat away. Come back up onto your all fours. Exhale, again, hug the elbows tight to side ribs. Come halfway down, shoulders away from the ears. Draw in the belly. Hold it here now for five, four, three, two, and one, come all the way down onto your tummy, well done. Cobra variation, walk your hands a little further forwards of your shoulder line. Deep breath in, exhale, drag your heart space energetically forwards as you lift up through the chest. Now there's a bend in the elbows, the shoulders are drawing away from the ears to create that lovely rounding through the back space rather than just a compression in the low spine. Inhale. Exhale, come all the way down to belly. Hands under shoulders, press up and back into your first downward facing dog. So take a moment, close the eyes. Maybe you're pedaling out through the feet a few times here just to continue to open up into your hamstrings, into your calves. Again, listening to the sound of your breath, can you allow yourself to be drawn back into the moment just by listening into your breath? Good, finding some stillness through the feet now. Inhale, look forward, step right foot between your hands. Coming into our dragon lunge on the second side, so you're lowering the back knee down, untucking the toes. Again, if your knees are tweaky, keep right knee stacking over top of the ankle. Otherwise, sink the hips deeper. So I think pubic bone toward front heel. Choosing whether to have the fingertips on the floor, the hands interlaced on the front thigh, maybe even reaching up through the hands. Now squeeze into your bottom as you sink low here. So yes, we're feeling a nice deep stretch, but we're switching on the muscles of our glutes and our thighs in order to support us. So we're not moving into our unassisted range here. Couple more nice big breaths, soften shoulders from ears. Next exhale, take hands to floor. Step forwards into your forward fold, gazing to belly button. Inhale, sweep the arms wide, look up to fingertips. Exhale, hands through prayer position at heart center. Inhale, stretch the arms up, look up. Exhale, soften your knees, folding forwards with a really lovely straight spine. 
Inhale, left foot steps back this time. Gently lower the left knee down to the floor and then inhale, reach the arms up for low lunge. So remember, you can always pad out underneath the left knee if that feels a little bit sensitive, having it straight down onto your mat. Now from here, we're going to take a big inhale, squeeze into the bottom, and then as you exhale, draw the left heel towards your butt. So holding it here, this is a really lovely way of strengthening your hamstring. So keep squeezing the heel in towards your bottom as much as you can, breathing nice and deeply. And if you're wobbly here, you have the control, so you can maybe heel toe that front foot slightly wider, and normally that helps just to bring a little bit more balance, a little bit more stability. Good, take one more big breath, see if you can squeeze the left heel in a little closer. Exhale, tuck the back toes, step back into high plank. Again, on your out breath, lower both knees to the floor, hold it there. One more chaturanga variation, inhale. Exhale, come halfway down, pause, squeeze elbows into side ribs, draw belly in. This time, option to tuck the toes and lift the knees away from the floor. So you're in full chaturanga here. Shoulders draw away from the ears. Squeeze in the thighs together for three, two, and one. Come all the way down to your belly. Well done. Untuck the toes. Inhale to cobra, lifting through the chest. Draw shoulders away from the ears. Upper back is broad. Good. Gently bring heart space to floor. Press back, downward facing dog. Let go of your head. Let go of your neck. You can continue to pedal out through the feet if that feels good, just to take your dog for a walk. See if you can spread the hands wider. Relax the shoulders more. Good, find stillness through the feet. Look forwards, left foot between the hands this time. Lower the back knee, low lunge, reach up through the fingertips. So squeezing into the glutes here, starting to take our little hamstring strengthener. So that sense of squeezing the right heel toward right bottom. Again, if this feels sensitive for the knee, if it feels too much, you can just stay in your low lunge position here. Otherwise, you're actively squeezing right heel to butt. You're feeling the right hamstring switch on. Try not to allow that tension to creep into the shoulders or the jaw. Try to keep those spaces soft. A couple more big breaths here. Good, gently release the right foot down. Hands to floor, step forwards this time. Forward fold, that softness remains in the knees. Inhale, sweep the arms up, drishti to thumbs, lift. Exhale, hands through prayer position at heart center. Final round, inhale, reach up. Exhale, soften the knees, forward fold. Inhale, right foot back, lower the back knee down to the floor. Inhale, low lunge, reach up through the arms. So again, lots of variations. You can stay here. You can come into that same hamstring strengthener, or you could even take hold of the top of your right foot, perhaps with right hand, perhaps with left hand as well. So drawing heel to butt this time, rather than strengthening the hamstring, we're getting into the quad. So nice deep breaths. If like me, you went for a run for the first time in about a year and a half, <laughs> this will hopefully feel like a nice release. Also a space in the body where we hold a lot of frustration. So just breathe out anything that comes up here. Again, you have the control of your emotions. So let them go on the exhale. Make space for more goodness. One more big breath. Good, let go. Try not to catapult foot to floor. Step back, high plank. Exhale all the way down onto your belly, whichever way you please. Knees or full chaturanga. Inhale to cobra or lift the thighs and shins, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing. Relax your head and neck. Maybe even sliding the bottom set of teeth from left to right just to release into your jaw. And what can you adjust right now to make this posture feel better in your body? It might be just softening the knees slightly to bring more length into the back. It might be reaching the heels further to the floor to find a deeper stretch for the backs of your legs. 
do what feels intuitive for you keep questioning yourself asking yourself through your practice how can i make this better okay inhale right foot between the hands lower the back knee down inhale low lunge reach up through the arms okay so from here let's start to draw the left heel toward left bottom hold on to the top of the foot maybe maybe one hand maybe both remember if that's not good for the knee you just stay in your low lunge variation the first two variations are there for you otherwise breathing nice and deeply into left quad again relax the shoulders the jaw really intensify that ujjayi breath to meet the intensity of the posture one more good release the left foot try not to catapult it to the floor hands touch down step forwards into your forward fold drishti gaze to belly button and then big breath in reach up through the arms look for the thumbs exhale hands through prayer position at heart center excellent work okay so again you can either have the feet hip distance if back is tweaky otherwise step the feet together for utkatasana chair pose inhale bend the knees sweep up through the arms imagine you're sitting into your imaginary chair here curling under the tailbone low back is long now let's take those single pigeon legs again left uh, weight moves into left foot right knee lifts you're in this kind of little ninja stance and then we're taking the right ankle over the left thigh now fixate your gaze on one spot gently sink deeper into your chair weight is in the left heel if you want to come deeper still hands into prayer position see if you can maybe rest your forearms on the right shin so many interesting ways to control the balance here <laughs> fixating your gaze is one focusing on your breath is another or someone once told me that if you take the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth it helps to balance works for me sometimes but not always <laughs> okay inhale come back to your utkatasana reach up through the arms replace the right foot down to the floor sit down into your knees again come low into your chair straight to second side wait to right foot this time left ankle comes across the right thigh making that figure four straight nice big breaths again if you want more of a challenge maybe you're just bringing the prayer hands together resting your forearms on the shin you're not pressing through the shin here you're literally just contacting your forearms to the shin no weight running through still working into the intrinsic core into the strength of our legs keeping our balance by using maybe the gaze maybe the breath maybe the tip of the tongue one more good stretch up through the arms lower the left foot to floor exhale well deserved forward fold let it go good let's step back into downward facing dog from here take a deep inhale through your nose cleansing breath out through your mouth let it go well done inhale left foot between your hands high lunge so stay high on the back toes sweep the arms up alongside the ears now draw in the belly sink into the back knee ever so slightly my favorite hip flexor opener left hand to left hip inhale stretch up through your right fingertips and as you exhale take your stretch over toward the left so you're opening up into the side body but also hopefully feeling a really gorgeous release for your right hip flexor and remember you have the control here so if this is too much you just bring your torso back up toward the center line a little bit more but if you want more maybe on your exhale you're taking the side body up and over a bit further one more deep inhale exhale rise back up to the top ground the back heel down to the floor interlace your fingers send your palms forwards and arch through your spine warrior two variation here 
Imagine that you're that angry cat through the back body. So you're making a C shape with the spine. You're drawing your belly in. Relax the neck. Let the head hang forwards. One more deep breath. And then as you exhale, bring the hands behind you. Interlace the fingers. Dip the chin to chest and lift the hands away from low back. Find a gorgeous opening for the back of your neck and shoulders here. One more big inhale. Square your heart space toward the front of your mat and then start to find humble warrior. Upper body moves down toward the floor. Now the power's in the legs. Press the mat away with the heels. Have a sense that you're trying to reach the arms up and over like you want to tap your thumbs to the floor. Maybe the palms of the hands are squeezing together to find an extra release for your neck and shoulders. And let the head hang. Good, one more big inhale. Exhale, spiral your hands either side of front foot, come up onto the ball of your back foot, and then come onto the knife edge of the back foot, moving into a side plank variation from here. Left foot can either be in line with belly button, or maybe if you've got the balance, you can take left foot on top of right, stretching the left arm up toward the sky. Wherever you are, try to lift the right hip nice and high away from the floor. And rather than dumping weight down through the right hand and wrist, reach up through left fingertips more. Think about trying to send your energy up toward the ceiling. One more big breath in. Exhale, spiral top hand down to the floor. Come all the way down onto your belly through half or full chaturanga. Well done. Hands pile one on top of the other underneath the forehead. Relax your forehead down onto your hands. Now energize your legs. Pull up through your kneecaps. Thighs engaged, bottom switched on, toes pointed, deep inhale. Exhale, lift just your legs as high as you can. Upper body is relaxed. Use the power and strength of your legs to lift your feet a bit higher. Deep breaths. Again, hamstrings working here, quads strengthening. And then gently release. Tuck the toes, send yourself up and back into downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot between your hands. High lunge again, so you're on the ball of the back foot, reaching up through the arms. Now soften into the back knee ever so slightly so that you can curl under your tailbone. Side stretch, right hand to right hip. Inhale, lengthen up through left fingertips. Exhale, take your side stretch toward the right side. Open up through the left hip flexor. Relax your shoulders, unlock your jaw. And enjoy that gorgeous release through the left hand side of your body. Again, remember that you can either take it deeper or you can always come back to the center line if it's too much. One more big inhale. Now exhale, ground the back heel to the floor, warrior two legs. Interlace your hands, press your palms forwards and arch through your upper back. Dip your chin to your chest, let your head and neck go. Imagine you're an angry cat. You're making that C shape through the spine, rounding through the spine. Keep pressing through the hands, releasing for the back of your neck. One more inhale. And then exhale, hands come behind you, interlace your fingers. Dip your chin to chest and then slowly, gently lift the hands as high away from your bottom as you can. Relax your jaw. Let go of what you can't control here. Maybe it's the fact you can't lift your hands any higher. Just breathe into that. Be with that. Sit with it. Have you got the control here just to focus on your breath? Not let that sensation or feeling overcome you. Inhale, humble warrior. Square the chest forwards and then diving the upper body down. Palms of hands squeezing into the center line, hands reaching up and over the head. Relax your neck. As you perhaps close the eyes, press a little more firmly through the heels. 
some nice strong legs here. Good, release the hands down either side of the front foot. First off, come onto the ball of your back foot and then come onto the knife edge of the back foot. From there, you're taking your side plank variation. So you might have the right foot in line with belly button. You might stack right foot on top of the left and stretch your right arm high. Again, rather than thinking about dumping the weight down into your left wrist and hand, reach up through right fingertips, reach up through the bottom hip for three, two, and one. Right hand comes to the floor. Come down to your belly through half or full chaturanga. Take your time to get there. Well done. This time, stretch your arms forwards, fingertips reaching to the space in front of you. Let's keep our legs as they are on the floor. Deep breath in. Exhale, lift the chest and the arms. Lifting them as high as you can, strengthening the back muscles here. Three. Two. One, good. Hands under shoulders, press up and back, downward facing dog. Give yourself a moment. Maybe sway the head side to side, relax the neck. Really nice work, everyone. Okay, on your inhale, gently lower both knees down to the floor. Take a moment in child's pose, bottom to heels, forehead to mat. Just a nice big breath in through your nose. A big sigh out through your mouth, let it go. And then just sit back onto the heels and come all the way up. Okay, so we're going to have a little look at tripod headstand today. Obviously, if it doesn't feel okay to sit on the heels for a few moments here, you can come into a comfortable seated position. So if you know exactly what you're doing, I'm more than happy for you to just come into the posture and hold it for a good few breaths. Uh, otherwise, I will do a little demo of, of how I normally get into it, what my, um, what my top tips are for getting into a uh, tripod headstand. So I always sit back onto the heels because I use the dimensions of my body uh, as to where I'm gonna kind of, or how I'm gonna set myself up for the posture. So I spread my hands wide. And as you can see, there's from the tip of your thumb down to the wrist, there's this kind of like arcing shape, which if you put this down, it almost like a puzzle piece slots in around the outer edges of the knee. So that's where my hands go, my fingers are spread wide. And it's the crown of my head, so the very top of my head that comes down to the mat. And as my head comes down to the floor, I just want to double check that my arms are at right angles. So elbow lines up with wrist, okay? So once you're down in that space, it's really a sense of pressing down through the palms. We want to avoid crunching through the neck and allowing the shoulders to move down. In fact, we don't want to take much weight into the head at all. We really want to use the upper arms here. And there's also a sense of squeezing the elbows into center line, and that's gonna to help to support us even more. So from there, it's just a matter of tucking under the toes, lifting the bottom high and walking the feet towards you. And you're welcome to stay here. Believe it or not, this is just as difficult as taking the feet up. Maybe you're just seeing can you balance one knee on the back of one upper arm and then changing over. Maybe eventually both knees come up and then from there you start to lift up maybe into your little cosmic egg or maybe even lifting the feet up toward the sky. So just have a little bit of a play. Nice big breath. So again it's that kind of arc from the tip of your thumb down to your wrist, which slots in quite nicely around the outer edges of your knees. And then the crown of the head comes down. And again, you're just checking here. Okay, have I got right angles in my elbows? Are my elbows hugging into the center line? Are my shoulders lifted away from my ears? And once you've done your checklist there, tuck the toes, lift the bottom high, walk the feet a little closer in towards you. So nice big breaths. And there's nothing wrong with staying in this position. 
again it's all about control it's all about that attitude is it oh i can't do this i'm never going to be able to do this what's the point or is it oh this is really hard but if i work a little bit harder at it maybe i'll get there one day well done so let's take another three big breaths whichever stage you're at and then gently coming down let's find child's pose for a moment forehead to floor reach the arms forwards and just have a moment of grounding after my little trip upside down a couple more big breaths just bringing the energy down feeling things settle in uh, within you a little bit more. Well done. And then just gently either sit back onto the heels or find any comfortable seated position and we'll traction out through the neck. So from your comfortable seat, lengthening up nice and tall, take a big breath in. Exhale, left ear to left shoulder, let the head hang over to one side and just pause. Maybe the right shoulder rolls back a little bit more to find a bit more space through the right side of your neck. And if you want more of a stretch, left hand comes up to rest onto the side of the head. So try to avoid the urge to tug the head to one side, just allow the weight of your hand to open up the side neck. A good option to creep fingertips around to the base of your skull and turn your chin in the direction of your left armpit. And just breathe there into the back of your neck. Well done. Gently release the left hand if you're using it. Bring your chin to centre of chest and then allow the right ear to fall over to the right shoulder. So give your head over to gravity. Just let go. Maybe the left shoulder rolls back slightly to deepen the stretch through the muscle fibres in the left hand side of your neck. Perhaps your right hand comes up onto the side of your head. Again, don't pull, don't yank, just let the weight of your hand open up the neck in its own time. Stay with your deep breath, remembering that by controlling the length of the exhale, you are giving your body the time and space that it needs to open up. Again, maybe walking the fingertips around to the base of the skull, turning your chin down in the direction of the right armpit, breathing into the back of the neck. Well done, gently release the right hand down, chin tucks the center of chest, slowly, gently, bring your head back up onto the center line. Well done. Okay, so before we start to bring it down, we're going to take either Baddha or a Supta Baddha variation or hero pose. But again, just listening to your body. So for hero pose, this doesn't feel great on everyone's knees, so please listen to them carefully. So we're coming up with the knees and thighs together, the heels wide. So the bottom sits down toward the floor in between the heels. And this isn't possible for everybody. So if you have cushions or yoga blocks or something to take underneath your seat so that you can take it down, then please feel free to just to pad out that space. Now, if that just doesn't feel good for your body today, you're coming into, into Baddha Konasana, so the soles of the feet together and the knees are wide in that shape. Okay, so just see what feels best for you. And just choosing the option that feels most comfortable in your body. 
to remember if you're in your hero pose the heels are wide the bottom is either down on the floor or it's down on your cushion or your block now if you're sat on a prop like a cushion or a block I want you to stay fairly upright here so you can bring the fingertips to the floor you can lift up through the center of the chest and roll the shoulders back but you're going to stay up Soften chin to chest, close the eyes, nice deep breaths here. Now if your bottom can easily come all the way down to the floor between the heels, then you can come all the way down onto your back if that feels okay. Similarly, if you took the Baddha soles of feet together, knees wide instead, you can feel free to come down into Supta Baddha instead. So just choose where you wanna go, what feels good in your body, and we're going to stay here for five deep breaths. So letting your heart rate slow down. Let your prana, your energy settle. And if it's the mind that feels a little bit out of control today, if the thoughts in your mind are really running wild, then just keep your awareness on your breath. And if your one reoccurring thought is, this is uncomfortable, this is too much, then ease yourself out until you find yourself in a space where you can just focus on your breath and nothing else. Coming back to that sense of steadiness and ease. Good, use this as your last big breath. And if you're in hero pose or Supta Baddha Konasana, you're just gently going to bring yourself up to meet on neighbors who might still be in an upright position and just gently releasing. So maybe coming onto the knees if you're in hero pose and then stretching the legs out in front, give them a well-deserved little shake around, maybe even a little pat down if you need it and we'll start to find our way onto our back. So whenever you're ready, Reach the hands forwards, gently draw belly button to spine and lower yourself all the way down to the floor. Let's move into a nice gentle twist just to neutralize the spine so the arms come nice and wide. Big inhale, draw the knees towards you, exhale both knees over to the left. So don't worry about the knees getting all the way down to the floor. Try to keep the backs of your shoulders connected to the mat. Soften your belly, unclench your jaw. If you want to take this twist deeper, the knees could be in line with your belly button. You can even cross the right leg over top of left if you want to. Good, breathe in, bring your knees up to center and breathe out, bring your knees over to the right. So again, the shoulders are grounded, backs of shoulders are grounded. Softening into your tummy. If you took it deeper by lining your knees up with your belly button or crossing the top leg over the bottom leg, you're welcome to do so here too. Choose the option that fills you up that makes you feel good. Knowing that you have the power in yourself to make life as easy as it can be. Gently coming all the way back up to center and releasing into your shavasana, into your relaxation. So choose whichever variation in your body feels best. 
legs extended, Supta Baddha Konasana, or maybe even soles of feet, mat width and knees together. Placing the arms wide, or if it helps you to feel connected with your breath, maybe one hand rests on your heart and the opposite hand rests on your belly. With your eyes closed, just let your breath come and go. The breath moves at its own natural rhythm. its own natural pace. For the next few moments, you have nothing else to do. Nowhere else to be. Take this opportunity to completely relax. So if you have a little while longer this morning, I welcome you to stay in your Shavasana for as long as you can. If not, start to deepen your breath once more. Begin to introduce some fingertip movements, maybe some wiggles through your toes, eventually revolving through the wrists and the ankles and eventually taking a nice full body stretch. As the knees draw to the chest, just roll yourself over to one side, pause there in a fetal position for a moment. And in your own time, come up into a comfortable seat. As you arrive there, taking the prayer hands to the heart center, bowing the chin gently into the chest. Sealing the energy of our practice today with the sound of Om. Take a breath in through your nose. Prayer hands moving up to the space between the eyebrows. Peace in your thoughts. Prayer hands in front of your lips. Peace in your words. And in front of your heart. Peace in your actions. Namaste everybody.
Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Hope you enjoyed the practice and really looking forward to seeing you again on the map very soon. Thank you. Have a lovely day.